Hi, I'm Kelly, and today we're going to review the Nikon Z50 firmware update version 2.4. Let's get to it! Okay, so here we are. All the tests that I ran today, I used the Nikon Z70-200, to which is my fastest focusing lens. So let's get into the review. So the Nikon Z firmware update version 2.4, let's take a look at what Nikon said they um, added to this update. Uh, number one, eye detection AF is now available during video recording. Number two, improved eye detection performance um, in auto area AF. Number three, improved refresh rate of the focus points displayed in live view during subject tracking and face eye detection AF. So we're gonna take these one at a time and just jump into them and have a look at the results, see what we found. Let's go to number one. Um, eye detection AF is now available during video recording. My test setup um, had a picture that I focused on and cycled through all the different video modes just to make sure that eye detection was working in um, each of the modes. And without further ado, let's look at the results. And again, these are my results. Your results may vary. Happy to get in the, jump in the comments if you have um, some of your own thoughts or some of your own tests that you disagree with what I'm saying. These are all my opinions, just what I found in my own testing. All right, let's, uh, let's take a look. And there you have it. The Nikon Z firmware update version 2.4 uh, face eye detection of video uh, doesn't work in any of the slow modes, does not work in uh, 1080, 100p, or 200p. All the other modes, um, it did detect the face. So, uh, plain and simple, that's what I found in my testing. If you got something different, then leave a note in the comments. Um, otherwise, just be aware that uh, it does work now, but not on every mode, but the, the modes that you have here uh, with the green checks. All right. Next, improved eye detection performance for auto area AF. Let me talk about the test setup. I have a Z2 and I have a Z50. I took both cameras and set them up the exact same distance from my little test subject. And uh, with each camera, I started at 70 millimeters and slowly moved the uh, zoom up to 200 millimeters to determine the focal length on the Z6 II first, at what point did the camera detect the face and at what point did the camera detect the eye as I zoomed in. And then I did that with the Z50 with the old firmware and then I did it again with the Z50 on the new firmware. Keeping in mind that the actual results for the Z50, I had to apply a 1.5 crop factor to the millimeter. So the, the chart that I'm about to show you is are the results of the test. I normalized everything for the crop factor with the chart you're about to see with the results. Um, if that didn't make sense, trust me, they're accurate. All right, so here are the results without further ado. Chart on the left, Nikon focusing system, and these are relative by the way, so the left-hand side is the uh, equivalent focal length that, that I, the camera started to detect the face and the eyes, uh, but it's a it's relative, right? Depending on how big my face chart is and how far away it is and things like that. So this is a this is a relative performance chart, not an exact focal length chart, right? Um, so the Nikon Z62 found the face and found the eyes based on the distance that I was using in my test at around 135 millimeters. The Z50, with the old firmware, found the face at about the same distance. But for the eyes, it like never found them. I had to go past 200 millimeters um, on the Z50 and actually move the camera a little bit closer, a touch closer in order for it to find the eyes. So the, the face and eye, very, very different on the Z50 uh, with the old firmware. I'm happy to announce the Z50 with the version 2.4 firmware effectively 
is finding the face and the eyes at the same time, just like the Z6 II does. From everything I can tell, the new firmware on the Z50 um, makes it perform just as good as the Nikon Z6 II does in terms of face and eye detection, which is great news. And that gives us my conclusion on this particular test is, I mean, they're equivalent. So uh, great news, great job Nikon. Happy to see um, additional firmware updates coming to um, to some of the other bodies and, and bringing some equivalents there. And honestly, I think across the whole line, the ZFC, the Z50, the Z5, the Z6, Z6 II, 7, 7 II, Face Eye Detect should be approximately the same performance across all the cameras. If you're going to have a focus mode on a camera across you know, similar types of bodies, they should all perform about the same and do the same things. So on this particular update, well done Nikon. Um, everybody who installs this update, I think will be very, very pleased. All right, performing just as good as the Nikon Z6 II, in my opinion, at this point. All right, let's go to the next. Improved refresh rate for the focus points displayed in the live view during subject tracking and face eye detection. Um, I tested these independently because they're two different uh, two different focus modes. So the first one here is the face eye detect. So what I did here um, to test this was I, I created, and you can see from these two pictures here, I created a scenario to push the algorithms until they got confused in order to cause the focus to shift rather erratically between the face and something else in the foreground. So I put this uh, put this notebook up in front of the face and um, I'll show you a video actually of this. It's I think it's just a few seconds long. But to show you the camera was like completely freaking out when I set this test up. But that's what I wanted. I want the folk I wanted the focus to just sort of sporadically move and shift uh, very, very quickly to see how fast as it was shifting its focus how fast the box was being drawn because that's what they're saying they're, that they're doing, right? So I ran this test and um, let's take a look, look at the results and then I'll draw some conclusions with it. A real quick note about how I think this works. Now, I, I don't work for Nikon and I don't uh, know their developers and how they design stuff. For, but from what I can tell, the, um, the focusing system and the camera, and it's a computer, right? It has different, three different services effectively all sort of running in parallel. There's the focusing service, which is where do I, as a camera, where do, where do I focus? And um, that process is, starts with, you know, how big of an area am I dealing with here? Where do I, what's my focus area that I'm dealing with? Is it the full screen or is it inside a box or whatever? Um, do I detect a face or not? Right, so in wide area AF on the Z50, it's got the whole screen to deal with, number one, and then the next thing the, the algorithm does is says, can I find a face? If it can find a face, then it's gonna try to look for an eye. If it can find an eye, then it tries to focus on either the face or eye, whatever it can find. And so it's going to find that location on the screen where the face or the eye is, so that's the location, that's where the box gets drawn, and then What's the, what's the distance to actually focus and tell the, the lens to, to go focus. That information gets communicated to two other processes that are uh, running inside the camera, two other uh, services, right? So there's the draw the box service, which is the focusing system is saying, I found a face or I found an eye and here's where it is, please go draw a box. That information gets communicated to the the box drawing service and it, it tries to draw the box as quickly as it can. And then the distance information on how to, where to focus gets sent to another service and it's going to tell the lens to focus a certain distance. And these things are all just running in parallel um, a lot, many, many times a second, right? Maybe hundreds or many, many hundreds of times a second. So uh, just to note that all these things are working in parallel and the from what I can tell with this particular update, the developers at Nikon that write that little box drawing piece of code, their code needed some, a little bit of work, <laughs> I guess. So um, anyway, that's what this test is about, is to try and see how well that works, right? 
Um, and just to be clear, this particular test that I did to test this box drawing service, uh, that's the only thing I'm testing here. Nothing, not, this doesn't have to do with face eye detect. It has to do with how quickly the box gets drawn um, in the face eye detection uh, focus mode. All right, so here I am in NX Studio to, to show you the results of this test. You've already seen the erratic behavior of the focusing system. So now I'm going to take a bunch of pictures on um, high extended, as fast as a camera can take pictures, and watch what happens with the box as it's kind of freaking out trying to figure out where to focus. I'm running like 14 or 15, I guess, whatever the camera, the Z50 can do. Uh, I'm taking a bunch of pictures here, fractions of a second apart. So these are very, very quick between, between images. Here I am in NX Studio, and I'm going to take a look at these series of images that we're taking in rapid succession under high extended mode. And you can see the camera found the face, it found the eye. And this is with the new firmware, by the way. And it's, it's ignoring this book that has a lot of contrast in it. And everything is working just fine. Uh, the next frame, the camera finds the eye again, no problem. The next frame, the camera's still focused on the eye, but you can see the box has changed. So what's happened here is the focusing system is getting ready to change focus, and it's communicated to the box drawing system and said, I've actually found something else to focus on, and the box is changing, right? The box is like, I found something different to focus on, and the, the lens actually hasn't made it there yet. Right? The lens is just now starting to get, get communicated to and say, hey, I found something else to focus on. You need to shift your focus, right? So we go to the next one, and the eye is still there. So that was like two frames. The third frame, all of a sudden now, the lens finally catches up to the focus point change and focuses on the book right and loses the eye all right the camera then changes and says again wait I, I see an eye there let's focus on the eye and it communicates to the box drawing service and the box drawing service says oh i've got a new point let me draw that box but the camera lens hasn't quite caught up yet and a fraction of a second later one frame two frames three frames later and one more now and now we have it so the, you can see that from what I can tell the group that does the little box drawing service here they are drawing that box the the instant they get a new focus location from the focusing system and they're not waiting for the lens to catch up to it now in a sense I, this is fine I mean I don't know that you're gonna run into I'm, I'm being very very nitpicky here just to try and see exactly what the algorithms are doing. This is all in a fraction of a second, right? So the point is, I think Nikon's actually done a really good job with this, um, updating the location of where the camera is focusing. And in fact, it's in some ways because the box drawing service is now so fast, it's actually ahead of the lens a little bit because the lens is mechanical, right? It takes a little bit of time to focus. Uh, it's actually predictive a little bit. It's a little bit ahead of the game, which is not a, necessarily a bad thing. So I think all in all, Nikon did a really good job with this. Um, very happy with it. If unless you're doing some like crazy tests like I am, you'll never notice this. Uh, but just wanted to make you aware they did a really nice job. I think with this particular update. All right, all right. Let's talk about the third option for improved refresh rate focus points for subject tracking. In this case, I did the same test setup where I had the face and have the the book, but I'm I'm grabbing um, using subject tracking to track the face of the of the subject, and then I'm moving the camera left and right to see how well it tracks um, around uh, and moving it pretty quickly, right? So. Uh, just to, to make sure that the box is tracking really, really well if I'm kind of moving side to side really, really quick. All right, so let's take a look at those, those results. Here we are in NX Studio taking a look at these images. So you'll, what you'll see is that I start taking images again, high extended, as fast as a camera can take, take images. Uh, and once I start taking images, I pan 
to the right and then pan back to the left. So let's just take a look and see what happens here uh, during, during this particular test. So first image, second image, sharp. Now you can see I, I'm, I'm panning, right? So I'm, I'm sitting here panning effectively to the left and the image is moving to the right and the box is shifting over to the right. Still the box is right over the eye, which is, which is great. I move a little bit more, box still over the eye. Again, I'm doing this very, very rapidly. So, so far, the, the box and the location, the, the, the uh, subject tracking looks like it's doing really, really well. Now, this is where things get a little weird on the subject tracking. And I don't have a great explanation for this. Uh, you can see that the box is still tracking where it's supposed to track. So the camera found the, the subject, it found the subject tracking um, the eye, that part of the face that I've asked it to track. But what happened, the old box location now has a really, really high contrast subject in the foreground. And the camera got confused. <laughs> In terms of where it says it's supposed to focus, the box is where it's supposed to be, but I moved the camera and the the notebook is now where the box was in the last frame or two, right? So this high contrast foreground element has now come into the center of the frame where the subject tracking box was a few frames ago, and that confused the camera. So I, I will tell you, I ran the same test on the Nikon Z6 II and it did a better job at this. So uh, I, think the, uh, I think there's some more work, I guess, uh, that Nikon needs to do in terms of the algorithm and how it, how it focuses in subject tracking. The, uh, the box drawing, though, is right on and it continues to be... Um, doing really, really well. But see, look, one frame later, it found it again. So is this a nit? It's a total nit. I, I literally, it's, it's almost nothing, but I did get, you know, one out of, um, out of focus frame there. So, but just to note the box itself in terms of the, the update, it's great. I mean, the box is very, very sticky where it's supposed to be. So anyway, I won't go into a lot more detail there. Um, just to know, I think, you know, kudos to the Nikon box drawing people. They're, they're certainly um, doing a really, really good job there. And in conclusion um, on this last bit uh, for the firmware update, uh, for subject tracking, focus box stickiness to the subject is really, really good uh, for this update. And uh, subject tracking continues to be, you know, okay, really good for slow moving or stationary objects. I would not use subject tracking for super high fast uh, subjects, right? Um, I mean, you, your mileage may vary. I'm just letting you know. If I was doing, if I'm tracking something fast, I'm not going to use subject tracking. I'm going to use uh, wide area small, wide area large, probably. Um, you can refer back to my focus talks um, to learn a little bit more about those if you want. Anyway, so that is, that's it. That's my summary. The update's really, really good. Hopefully you will, um, you'll love it if you do the update. Um, there's plenty of videos out there on how to update your firmware. Copy the firmware to the root of your card, put the card in the, in the camera and go into your uh, settings and you can update the firmware. The firmware update does take um, several minutes, so be patient. Make sure you have a really good charged battery before you do it. Um, hopefully you found that helpful. Please subscribe, thumbs up, um, that helps the channel. Thanks so much. Take care. We'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.